Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The prologue of the gospel, uh, the gospel of John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then jumps 14 verses, and it says, And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we beheld his glory, glory as the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The good news is God went all in with us in coming in Jesus, and it's our hope and prayer that we go all in with God. Today is Renewal Sunday, an opportunity for us to consider those great commands to love God with our, all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourself. And we believe that God has put us here to help people grow closer to God and to one another. Your presence here is an act showing, and online, that you want to grow deeper in your relationship with God. And if we can help out in any way, please do let us know. In fact, after this service, uh, we're going to uh, place our time capsule uh, in the ground again. And hopefully in 25 years, they'll open it up and be reminded of some of the activities that happened over our 50th anniversary, as well as craziness of COVID and other things that uh, they'll enjoy trying to figure out what exactly took place and uh, if you want to join us it'll just be a brief uh, little service right uh, near the porticache uh, immediately following the service. Today we welcome the uh, Reverend Ted Foote. Ted has uh, we all kind of gotten to know Ted through his book uh, he and a, a partner wrote uh, Being Presbyterian in the Bible Belt, and we have used that for years with our confirmands, as well as uh, Jackie was saying, uh, they used it at her church uh, as well, an opportunity to, to discern what we believe and to figure that out. And uh, so Ted has helped us do that, and we'll be preaching today, and uh, for that we're very grateful. Ted served for 16 years up at uh, First Pres in Bryan and now is helping out as an interim in Sherman. And so welcome. We're glad that you're here. We do believe everyone needs a church home and extended family. And I'm reminded about that weekly, of the importance to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. And uh, if you're a guest, we'd like to extend a special word of welcome to you. Uh, if you'd like to uh, meet one of our elders or leaders in the back, uh, immediately following the service at our Welcome Center, you can do that, and they'll have a little gift bag for you as well. Uh, we do have, in fact, next week at our table, we're going to have a new member's lunch to get to know Northwoods and an opportunity for us to uh, ask questions and to get to know one another better. And if you're interested in that, please do let us know and join us at that new member lunch. The table today, boy, when I walked in, it would just smelled terrific. Uh, the menu today is uh, jambalaya, rice, and a dinner roll, or the breakfast entree is sausage, egg, cheese on a croissant with potato patty and assorted desserts. Uh, so you know that I love the nourishment we get from the food, but also the nourishment we get from uh, having fellowship together, and we'd invite you to join us uh, down in the fellowship hall. Coming up uh, on October 27th, there's a pizza and movie night. We want you to put that on your calendar at 6.30. Uh, you can check the e-flash uh, as well as our website for that. And then lastly, we wanted you to know that we're once again doing our Advent wreaths as we did last uh, year. Uh, a wonderful way for us to uh, decorate the narthex with different wreaths. And we wanted you to get going on that, uh, realizing that that's coming up uh, near... Uh, really at the end of November, beginning of December. So let us stand and we're going to sing together for the beauty of the earth.
seated. So, if you really want to survive, no. If you want to win at being a kid, it just takes knowing and doing the basics. It's not that complicated. And here's the first thing. Are you ready for it? Put God first. Why do you think this is the first thing we're talking about? Because it's important. Even as kids, we should make God a priority. You know, let him know that he's first in our lives. We're all busy, right? With school and homework and chores. We don't have a whole lot of free time left. But instead of just playing video games and sports and hanging out with friends, we should find time to spend with God, too. Let's do an experiment. Here is a bowl. It represents your life. This is a huge candy bar. Pretty big, huh? These are red fish candies. Medium sized. These little guys are Skittles. Do you think all of this will fit into this bowl? Let's find out. Let's try pouring the smallest things in first. Now let's put in the medium fish candies. Now the Kit Kat. Well, that didn't work. Let's try it another way. This time, let's put the big things in first. It fits! Wait a second. I think there's a lesson here. If we put the big things in first, everything will fit right. And in your own life, what could be bigger than God? Our memory verse for today says, Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and strength. That's putting God first. And there are three ways to do that every week. First, pray. That's an easy thing to do every week. Second, read the Bible. You know, like practicing your memory verse every week. Third, talk about it. Talk about God in your classroom and at home. So, want to survive and win as a kid? Just remember the basics, starting with this. Put God first. Sunday school is starting. Children are invited to join their Sunday school teachers in the back for children's Sunday school in Grace Place. See you soon. Uh, am I on? That will preach, won't it? That message? Put God first. God's the big thing in our lives. Put God first. The song that we are about to sing is that very, very message. It is called The Heart of Worship. <clears throat> And very briefly, if you don't know the story behind this song, when Matt Redman wrote it um, in England, his church had been so focused on the style of worship they were doing and their music that he and the pastor decided that music would be removed from the worship service for a period of time so that they could focus on what the heart of worship really was, the big thing, the relationship with Jesus. And so this song was written to be the first song sung when they came back to worship and added music for the first time. So I want you to let these words wash over you. Let them be your prayer. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, Jesus. When the music fades, all is skipped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required Search much deeper within Through the way things are here You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus 
I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. We can pour all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, when it's all about you about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it, when it's all about you, all about you. that we get to do and just how much fun we have and it's so important to get back to the church so we can have way more events and bring more people in and so that everybody can have a church home happy renewal sunday um what i like about youth group is that it's very social but there's also like collected time for you uh pray worship and everything and you get lots of time to do what you want happy renewal sunday Thank you for all the contributions to Northwoods Youth Group. It enables us to do fun things like Mo Ranch, lock-ins, parties, and just everyday Wednesday youth groups. Thank you for all your contributions. Happy Renewal Sunday. Thank you for your donations to the church as they help us create a fulfilling youth environment. Northwoods, we thank you for your continuous financial commitments to this church family. Your contributions propel our church and enable us to live out our mission statement fully working heartily for the Lord in this community. On this Renewal Sunday, we invite you to open your hearts to what Reverend Ted has to say and allow your spirit to be renewed in this season. As you reflect on the year, we encourage you to also reflect on the many amazing things Northwoods has accomplished. Uplifting time of fellowship at the table lunches, many property updates, a beautiful choir and growing worship team, other growing areas of children's and youth ministry, including new leadership opportunities for our youth and the ability to cultivate meaningful events and youth retreats for them, a successful Make a Difference Day, an expansion of storage facilities in support of Sleep in Heavenly Peace, fulfilling men's and women's Bible studies and Sunday school class, and now reigniting a force of readers for Reynolds Elementary. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11 says, As each of us have received a gift, use it to serve one another, as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. This year, not only did our youth program grow, but we are excited to have five members of Northwoods back serving on the Presbyterian Youth Connection Council, which plans and hosts youth events such as Youth Rally and the Weekend Retreat Conclaves in the spring for all the youth in our presbytery. We are proud of their commitment to this role and also have six youth serving on our crew leadership team, which plans and leads worship services for our youth group in the fall, as well as planning and organizing our upcoming winter retreat. 
Thank you for your annual contributions that make all of this possible. It also enables us to support and try new things like our fall retreat and youth worship concert with other youth groups this summer. I'm also excited to share about our emerging college ministry, offering Bible studies for college students and young adults, and giving our youth members a place to call their own after they graduate high school and come home to visit their home church. This summer, we hosted two college Bible studies and had a Zoom check-in last semester for prayer requests. In past years, we have sent out college care packages to our college members to let them know that we're thinking about them. But now we also have created a group that they can call their own over the summer and over holidays to still meet and cultivate the same fellowship that they had in high school at youth group. When we come together in financial stewardship as one body, the possibilities are endless for what we can do to reach new groups, meet needs in our community, and create new opportunities for fellowships such as this. This is what the Day of Renewal is all about, reflecting in our own faith as well as our community of faith and thinking about its future and what that means for our church. While listening to our own hearts, we can think of where we would like to commit for the heart of Northwoods. Thank you, Northwoods. I kept thinking there couldn't be so much more and there was so much more. They, they certainly do a lot of things and I know that they really appreciate all the support they get from you as a congregation. Please join me in prayer. Eternal and almighty God, you speak to us from smoky mountains and from thunderous lightning. You speak to us through the sounds of whispers and the sounds of trumpets. You speak to us from the horrors of war and the times of peace. We don't always like the answers or the call to action, but you are speaking nonetheless, and you beg us to listen. You speak to us, and we seek to listen. We humbly ask you once again to speak now, for we are ready to hear your call one more time. Forgiving God, we confess that our confidence is often misplaced, as we think our abilities are sufficient rather than remembering your love. Even worse, we put our confidence in our belongings rather than in your generosity. In you, all forgiving love, we pray you redirect us according to the spirit and your will. And as we witness your presence in this world, we stand in awe for your gracious acts of compassion, we're grateful. For your providential provision of needs, we say thanks for those labors of love happening all around us in which we see your spirit shining, we smile and revel in your glory. Yet God, our world has many problems. We feel helpless to make a difference, so we pray. This week, the destruction, the senseless killing, the horrific acts of violence against innocent people have played out on our TV screens to the point that we actually began to see it and feel it in our hearts. We're unsure what needs to change, but change it must. Help us to be your people that make a difference. The way things change is when people stand up and speak with the power of their hearts and their minds, moving them to be present for the people of Israel and the people of Gaza. We pray for those places in which we see hurt. We ask for your healing. For those places in which we see unfairness, we ask for your justice. For those places in which we see pain or loss or distress, we ask for your restoration. For those places in which we see wrongdoings, we ask for what you see as right to begin now. We ask for these things because we see them and we know that you see them too. You boldly ask and we boldly ask you to help us make a difference, not only in our prayers, but in our voices and our actions. God, we also know that you see more than we can even begin to imagine. So we pray for your pervasive presence to permeate all life. Send us out as your people to follow your commands, to show a better way, to live together in community and to promote human flourishing in this world for everybody. 
Open our eyes to see what you see and open our hearts to participate in what your spirit is already doing. May we be bold in our discipleship as we leave here today. And may we also be bold in praying the prayer that you taught to all your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture readings this morning um, blend in with the earlier parts of the worship service. And if you want to know the truth, uh, the, the reading of the scripture is important. It's crucial. But um, with the other parts of worship this morning, I've almost asked myself, uh, why am I here? Because you all seem to have it together from young age all the way up. Let us hear God's word beginning with the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, which has already been referenced. Chapter 6 at verse 4. 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them be an emblem on your forehead. And then two readings from the Gospel of Luke. First at chapter 10, verse 25. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. And then from chapter 12, beginning at verse 32. Do not be afraid, little flock, said Jesus, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is God's word for life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open, O God, the curtains of our lives, we pray, that your light might shine in and your transforming gospel do just that, that the gospel might meet us where we are in the power of your spirit and change us as you would have us be changed and lead us as you would lead us and bring us to a maturity and a wholeness of life that will always escape us without your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we say together, amen. I count it a high privilege to be with you all today. Um, As Joni and I have uh, taken up our temporary quarters in North Texas, in Sherman, in Grace Presbytery, So I bring you greetings from the Covenant Presbyterian Church in Sherman. And um, while I'm a member of uh, the Presbytery of New Covenant, uh, I would hesitate to bring you greetings from Grace Presbytery because I would afraid that would presume too much since my membership is in this Presbytery. But at least I, I serve there. So count yourselves the recipients of North Texas greetings in general, maybe. Although, I would say, as I pass through grocery stores up there wearing my Astros hat, um, it it is good to be among more friends right now today. We'll see about next week. Paul uh, contacted me about this possibility just before uh, we moved to Sherman. Joni and I did, and 
I, I told him I would be glad to do that and I would talk to him later because I thought probably I could be away a Sunday. And he told me that you all have had over the past several weeks something about is it the games people play or, yeah. So he said this Sunday could be, if I wanted it to be, a game where we consider hearts because the theme is uh, one's treasure and one's heart. That's an assigned passage as I interpret it, almost like uh, taking an exam. Okay, here's the prompt. You write the essay. And, and I will tell you it caused me some anxiety, not simply because it was an assignment not of my choosing, but because it reminded me of my first years after I left home and I was at college and I played far more spades and hearts than I should have. In, in fact, had I not played so much spades and hearts, I am convinced today, looking back, that my grade point average would have been at least three-tenths of a point higher than it was. But I learned to play spades first. And spades is a game where, as you, as you may well know, you win by gathering tricks each time around the table and the one with uh, whose cards uh, win the most tricks of that hand, then you come out on top. I only learned to play hearts uh, sometime later because I sensed that there was something about playing hearts that was different and that was more difficult for, for my mind. You all have led me to revisit that anxiety, but I did learn to play hearts. Hearts is different from spades because you win or you avoid losing by giving up tricks around the table instead of gaining them. And um, the first thing I thought when the game of hearts was to be part of this reflection maybe, is I thought of the, the song from uh, 1976 where um, Dave Edmonds sang it, or 1979 it was, and then in 1981, Juice Newton sang it called Queen of Hearts. So I looked at Queen of Hearts and then I thought, oh no, this is about um, intimate relationships where there's not all that much investment. That's not what we're talking about. So I lay Queen of Hearts aside and I, I began to think in some other directions that would be more consistent with the scripture. But in the game of hearts, uh, you're trying to give up tricks. You want to lose because when you finish the round, every heart counts a point. And it's not about the queen of hearts because the worst thing that can happen 99 times out of 100 is to be holding the queen of spades because she will cost you 13 points. So for every heart you have, you get points. The queen of spades will get you 13 points and the goal, of course, is to have the fewest amount of points. So when the group plays to 50 or 100, you want to be down out of sight if you want to win. There's a paradox there. And, and the paradox is that the only way you win is to lose, with one exception. There's an aspect to the game that essentially is what we would call in other endeavors running the table. If you are able to take every trick, including the trick that would have the queen of spades in it, so you basically, like a vacuum cleaner, suck all the points off the table. If you get all the points, 
you get zero toward that goal of 100 or 50 that you don't want to ever reach. And everybody else gets 23 points. So you can inflict damage on all the other people around the table if you can but pull off running the table. In all the times I've played hearts, I maybe have done that once, maybe my partner has done it two or three times because you have to help your partner. But in real life and in history, the biblical record I think bears out that there is only one who is able to run the table. There is only one who is able to expend everything in order to gain for everyone else. And that is God. That what God does is to so invest in the life of this Jesus, for example, that love is played out in a theater beyond heaven. Love is played out in the theater of the earthly kingdom with all of God's people. And it is in that endeavor that God's people through the same heartbreak God endures in many aspects of life. It is in that enterprise that we know we are God's treasure and we are where God's heart is. If we play the game as if we can win by accumulating, we will find out at one or more points in life that we haven't really won. It is God's grace, rather, so invested with us that helps us to be made whole and to experience real treasure beyond what we can gain. God's investment is total. God does not even, I think, expect our investment to be total, but to be wholesome. Um, you may remember the um, business fable where it is said that if you think about breakfast, uh, the chicken is committed because the chicken provides the eggs but the pig is totally invested because the sausage and the bacon come at a higher price to the pig than the eggs do to the chicken. In a way, God seeks our commitment over all of life. Yes, there are times, there are severe moments as Jackie was reminding us in the prayers, there are times when the world is crumbling about us and life is threatened and life is given in order that other lives might be saved. That's when the commitment of those who serve or those who are first responders it happens, it develops in the moment often. And the Gospels reflect something of that, even in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus says that where life would be secure, you must lose it. And those who lose their life will keep it. Our identity 
is in the sharing of what God has given for the good of God's world. So when the Gospels record that our treasure needs to be in heaven so that it will not be stolen by thieves or eaten by moths, we have to think about that in a, in a significant way. Uh, we have to scratch where that itches just a little bit because heaven is not out in the clouds as if we can electronically send assets out there. That analogy doesn't work. I would suggest to you that if Jesus is in the middle of history and in the middle of people's lives, that God's expectation is that our invested treasure, or rather God's invested treasure through us, is best known when it's invested, totally invested as possible, right where we live. It is then that thieves cannot steal and moths cannot eat holes in it in a way that would ruin it. The song that comes to my, my mind more to this and to the way we live is not uh, Dave Edmonds or Juice Newton's Queen of Hearts, but it is uh, Don Schlitz's and Kenny Rogers' song of 1976 and 1978 called The Gambler. Is that it's a ballad on a train at night and the narrator says that the gambler tells him the secret to life is to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. That's when you're really playing poker. But he continues, every gambler knows that the secret to surviving is knowing what to throw away and knowing what to keep. You don't count your money while you're sitting at the table. That would be a distraction. It would cause you to lose focus. He goes on to say, every hand's a winner and every hand's a loser. That's no different when you start with a hand of hearts or spades. It's sort of neutral. But we're all given different gifts where God meets us, encounters us, intersects with us and others. In 2006, uh, Dr. Francis Collins wrote a book called The Language of God. He was already... Um, a preeminent medical researcher and a doctor. He just recently retired as, uh, uh, from the National Institute of Health and a leadership role that he'd had for several years. But he tells about in the 1990s going on a mission trip to Western Africa with his daughter because he thought, well, I have gifts to give I need to share those gifts. Uh, it'll be a great time with my daughter. This will be great. And then he says, when he arrived in Western Africa, uh, in the back country in particular, he was stunned. He said, I shouldn't have been, but I was stunned at the lack of resources uh, that were available. And he said, one day, uh, when we were there, the few days that we were there, a man came in who had um, so much fluid uh, in his chest cavity and around his heart uh, that I knew that he, his life was at risk uh, in a matter of not very many hours. So he said, if I were back in the States, 
I would have all sorts of uh, sonograms and, and uh, MRIs and pictures, and I could tell exactly where to put the needle to withdraw that fluid. He said, but I had none of that. And he said, with my heart literally in my throat because a mistake could be fatal to this man and it was a critical procedure. So he had talked this through with the man and he successfully completed the surgery, uh, the procedure. And the next day when he went in, the man was quite improved, but he realized that it would probably be only a matter of time before um, there would be some sort of uh, new infection or the fluid would reappear because there was not uh, as sanitary a situation for drinking water and food, etc. cetera, that, that the deck was stacked against this man and he says, I must have shown that in my face because when I walked in for the follow-up uh, consultation with the man uh, on his bed, he said to me, I sense that you are thinking more than you are saying. And he said, I'm wondering if you are thinking why in the world you are here. And then he said, in my thinking, you are here for me. Francis Collins says that all of his uh, medical wherewithal, training, experience, nothing in all of that could have made a greater impact on him than that man speaking his perception to him. He was no longer a medical expert from the developed world. He was one human being having invested something of what he had in the life of another who was willing to receive. Albert Curry Wynn was the moderator of the General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church in the United States, or as some of us call it, the Old Southern Church, in 1979, so he was one of the last three moderators before reunion in 1983. I heard Dr. Wynn preach a sermon at First Presbyterian Church in San Antonio, I think in his moderatorial year, and it, it's a sermon called The Simplest Thing in the World or the plainest and simplest thing in the world. And the text is from 1 John, we love because God first loved us. I remember thinking, even as I heard him preach, in fact, the title was so uh, provocative to me that I probably missed some of his preaching that night at First Church San Antonio. But I remember thinking, how simple is love, and I was uh, 26 years old at the time. A few years later, uh, I was given a book and it had the sermon printed there, but it was several years before I went back to reread the sermon. And I would share with you just a few lines from Dr. Wynn's sermon that I think go with this moment in the life of this church because of the theme of this day. He says, Christianity gets embodied and institutionalized in the church. And if the church is in any measure truly the church, it's all about the same thing that Christianity is all about. It is a group of people who are learning to love each other, who are learning to stand in the shoes of others, to see through the eyes of others, to identify the guilt of others, and not to be accusers of one another. 
being the church happens, I know. For in a time of deep personal tragedy, distress, and despair, I have felt a congregation of ordinary people. A church without a minister at the time put their collective arms about me and identify with my distress. And I have known healing. I have sensed beyond doubting that the love of God, whom I have never seen, was actualized in the midst of the church. He says, but sometimes in life, unlove is called murder or death or closing the heart. For the church to which the apostle John wrote, unlove is identified with fear. For if we do not love people, we can become terribly afraid of people. Fear and suspicion characterize so many people across the church. And this is nothing but unlove when it shows itself. The church has survived without a building, without a budget, without clergy or ministers, but the church cannot survive without love. You all have taught me by giving me the opportunity to think through treasure and hearts that stewarding our hearts away is where and when we experience the treasures of God which are love alive day by day. That actually is God's investment from way back that simply now includes us. Or maybe it's not so simple, but God is able to pull it off. God in Jesus Christ, friends, is continually beckoning us and changing us in grace, by grace, with grace for God's people everywhere in Western Africa, in the Middle East, in Harris County, Texas, and everywhere else. Jesus may well have been saying that living and serving in God's love is in fact our treasure. But you know as well as I do, it is for us that God's love to this world, in fact, starts our sensing that we're involved at all. That there's a treasure where God's heart is. Some have said that we need to be more afraid where we're not afraid enough. In other words, uh, maybe that's not what we think, but we need to be more in love as God is in love with God's world where we're not in love enough with God's world and maybe we're afraid to be that much in love. Our passions may differ. My guess is around this room there's all sorts of differences and even for those worshiping Um, beyond these walls by live stream or by YouTube later. And yet, no one is excused from this love of God invested in God's world through us. This stewarding what is mysterious and relentless from God because where God's heart is, There is God's treasure, and that means right here on 1906 and in the neighborhoods around. If Jesus is to be believed, and that's a huge phrase, 
If Jesus is to be believed, God's heart includes you and me and others. God's heart includes this community of faith called Northwoods Presbyterian. And even when Northwoods Presbyterian no longer exists, I know we're not supposed to think about those things and we're going to put a time capsule in the ground for somebody to find at some point. But even when Northwoods Presbyterian Church no longer exists, God's investments through this church in years past and in 2023 and coming up in 2024 and going forward will be God's bearing fruit in some rebirthed fashion in someone's life down the years, not unlike Dr. Collins experienced in Western Africa. And that is precisely what makes our stewardship investment crucial every day. Just what uh, the young elementary guy in the youth advertisements or mission messages were saying if God is that invested, won't you and I and others also be invested to the measure that the Holy Spirit makes possible? Because investing your life in history is placing the treasure that God gives the world in you for service and relationships where a thief cannot steal. Investing in God's world is where the thief cannot steal because the power of God's love is always going to be God's power alone. That's what the thief can never get to. So don't we thank God and don't we praise God that God is finding ways to invest in the treasure and to play the hand of history day by day, even through us. Imagine that. Because that's where God's heart is. All honor and praise be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, where our words are many and where our words are few, take us and shape us and lead us. Make us new in Jesus Christ through what we have revealed to us in his life and ministry and death and resurrection and live out the treasure of your love in all the ways that you desire through even us. For we offer ourselves to you this day and forever. And we say together, Amen. We're here because others invested their treasure in heaven, in God's kingdom. As we come to this time of commitment, and especially on this Renewal Sunday, we're invited to consider what we treasure and how can we invest in heavenly treasures. As we pass the offering plates, not only are we going to place our offerings uh, for that help us um, with our operating budget, but we're also going to have an opportunity to place those estimate of giving cards that are in your pews and consider ways that you can invest your treasures in God's kingdom. Let's have a prayer before and then the ushers will come forward to take our offering and collect our cards and then I'd invite the ushers at the end to go ahead and bring those offerings to the 
um, communion table. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Gracious God, we do thank you for the blessings that you've given us in life, for investing in us and for allowing us to be stewards of your gifts to others. God bless us as we continue to worship you. In your name we pray. Amen. I do believe that the ushers have the cards. I don't think I see them in the pews. So um, I do believe, ushers, do you have some cards? Well, we don't have them. So they are in the narthex, and uh, Kara will be bringing them by. So we are flexible people. Or I'll just fill them out for you. As we give our tithes and offerings and eventually fill out our commitment cards, I invite you to sing with us, Take My Life and Let It Be. If you haven't had an opportunity to fill out that estimate of giving card, you can go ahead and bring that up to the offering or to the communion table following the service, uh, or you can uh, place them maybe on the tables on your way out as well. 
Would you please join me in our uh, litany of dedication? I'll play the one if you'll play the all. O Lord of us all, who calls us to be stewards of your world, we present our commitments and our lives to you. It is more than a piece of paper saying what we intend to give. It is our covenant keeping. It is our discipleship. It is our prayer. It is our faith commitment. We give to you now our commitment, alive, wondrous, and full of hope, that your will might be done. Bless these offerings and commitments, and bless this church which offers itself to your service in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and sing our final hymn together. Ted reminded us, we invest in the kingdom when we invest in love. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. See the caring mother far from home and family. See the weary infant with no place to lay his head. We are Christ's disciples. We could make a difference. How 
can we do less than give this child a bed? We have come so far, yet there's still so far to go. We've lived and learned, yet there's so much more to know. Take a moment now to see what we have done. Oh, bride should never linger, for tomorrow has just begun.